Well, hey there, welcome once again to Drummer Daily. My name is Daniel Hathaway, AKA the Drum Coach, and I am so happy you could join me again today for another exciting, hopefully fun edition of Drummer Daily. This is episode number 152. And as always, if you if I happen to mention any, uh, any links or products or anything else um, that you might wanna go check out more, um, they'll always be in the show notes. Uh, for every episode of this podcast that you hear. And you can always find it at danielhadaway.com slash the episode number. So today's show notes would be at danielhadaway.com slash 152, 152. So uh, sometimes, you know, on this podcast, we talk about really, not really, I mean, uh, it is serious. Uh, I like talking about music and things like this because it's not, it's not as depressing as, you know, the, the, the evening news or anything like that. There's not any, any bad news normally that we have to talk about or anything that's, you know, uh, politics or wars or anything like that, you know. Uh, but, you know, I, so that stuff I think is like real serious, you know, and, 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 and it can be depressing sometimes. So I like talking about drums because that kind of stuff is not stuff that we have to talk about. At least for 10 minutes or so each day in this podcast, we don't have to talk about stuff like that. Um, but I, I do think that a lot of the stuff that we talk about here is pretty serious as far as, you know, um, you know, becoming a professional drummer or taking music seriously or becoming better at our craft. But then sometimes there's things that we, that we can just talk about here on this podcast and we can talk about them just because it's fun. And one of the things that I really enjoy about drums, and this is probably true of any musician about uh, with, with whatever instrument they play, but I love talking about drums and drumming because I think there's so much cool gear out there in the world and so much cool stuff. And I, I, you know, honestly, I just think that drums sound cool. Drums sound cool, cymbals sound cool, all these cool sticks and everything. All this gear that we have is really cool. It's just a lot of fun. I'm kind of a gear geek. Um, Now, I'm actually not super educated about gear. I'm not as educated about gear as a lot of other people out there in the drum world. Um, I probably don't know how many plies of wood are in my drums. Um, I think I know what kind of wood my drums are made out of, but I'm not sure. I just know that I hear it, I like it, um, and that's about as far as I go a lot of times with gear. Um, but I do know, I, I mean, I do know a, a decent a bit about different types of drums, what's out there, different symbols, things like that. So today I got a question uh, in from a listener and uh, it just says, uh, what are your thoughts on riding on a, a, a ride cymbal versus crashing on a ride cymbal? Um, and I thought that's kind of a fun question. It's not anything uh, that's going to be earth shattering to any, anybody, but I thought sometimes it's fun just to hang out and talk shop about drums. So I thought we'd do that today. Um, so the way I answer any question on this show is just based on my own personal experience. Um, and so I have a couple of ride symbols right now, um, that I kind of switch between, um, when I am, uh, you know, whatever situation, depending on the situation that I'm in, I actually have three right now that I think about it, I actually have three ride symbols. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute, but, um, I just switch those out, use them in different situations. Um, and uh, so I'll just kind of start from there. I will say this, I don't necessarily, um, you know, obviously the name that you get from a manufacturer, the manufacturer is gonna name a symbol a ride symbol or a crash or maybe a crash ride uh, that combines the two sometimes. But I don't really necessarily think about the name that's been given when considering what position it's gonna be. It's a good indication, but I like to play every symbol physically before I, before I buy it. Um, so, um, I don't, I don't, you know, I just kind of play a symbol. If it sounds like it'd be a good symbol to add to what I have for whatever reason, then yeah, it's going to make the cut. doesn't matter what it's called. Um, so I'm just going to list off a few of the symbols that I use right now, uh, ride symbols. Uh, the one that I use the most is kind of like my favorite symbol that I have, probably my favorite symbol that I've ever had. Um, and it's a Zildjian, it's a sound lab prototype. It's a 22 inch. And uh, it's a prototype, uh, Dillion Sound Lab, they do these kind of one-off symbols. Um, sometimes they'll make them for artists, sometimes they'll uh, make them for other reasons, and uh, they just kind of, uh, they, don't, they don't label them in a way that lets you know what they are, so you kind of just have to know what they are. So this one, uh, and maybe you heard that, I'm actually sitting here looking at it, 
behind the kit, behind the drum kit. But uh, this one is a, uh, so I said it's a Zildjian Sound Lab prototype. It's 22 inch and the uh, the body of the cymbal, so the, 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 it's a hybrid of two cymbals. So the body, the actual, you know, most of the surface of the cymbal is hammered and is made the way a K Constantinople um, Renaissance ride would be made. Uh, but then the, the bell of the symbol is the bell from an overhammered ride. So, and I may have got those two reversed. <laughs> uh, it might be the other way around. But either way, it's a combination of a overhammered and a, and a Renaissance ride. Um, and so I love this one. It's big, it's washy, it's uh, really thin, so it's really lightweight. In fact, it actually weighs less than uh, the other ride symbol that I always have, pretty much always have set up, which is a Zildjian K Constantinople 20 inch, medium, thin, high ride symbol. Now it actually doesn't say ride symbol on it, it's just a medium, thin, high. I think they don't really, they may not label their rides as much either. Um, it's just a medium, but most people will use this as like a jazz ride. I actually have it set up right now as a crash symbol, 20 inch crash symbol. Um, but like I said, it actually weighs more than the 22 inch uh, prototype that I have. So it's a little thicker, it's a little higher pitched, um, but I do actually, and a lot of times when I, when I play, I'll use this, even though it's over kind of in like the, I'd say the number one crash position, just over the rack tom. Um, even though it's up, up there, I'll still play it like a ride cymbal sometimes, because it, it, it is made to be used as a ride cymbal. Like I, like I said, it washes out a lot because it's more of a jazzy ride. So in really quiet things, I might use this one as a ride cymbal. And then in the louder situations, I'll use the Sound Lab prototype. Um, so I kind of use those a lot. And then the other one that I have is uh, Zildjian. It's a K Custom Medium Ride. Um, it's the one that came in that, uh, it comes in the worship pack, the Zildjian worship pack, um, which they sent me because I'm on the box for, the, for that worship pack. And so they sent me um, that pack of symbols. And so I have that symbol as well. And I'll use that for more, more uh, when I need a more defined ride sound, a little more, maybe more mainstream kind of pop, less, a little less organic or rootsy sounding stuff, I'll use that as a ride symbol. Um, but the reason why I mentioned just all of the gear that I have is I want to say that um, I also have like a, there's, I'm looking at, I have a, an 18 inch K Dark Crash. I've used that as a ride symbol before. Um, and most of the time, when I go out and, and play out or play on tours or things like that, I only play with two symbols set up. I play with the, the two, the first two symbols that I mentioned, the, the Sound Lab prototype and uh, the K Constantinople medium thin high ride. Uh, so they're both ride symbols, but I use them both as crashes. Um, and, and personally, I like to have symbols that are versatile. I don't like having a ton of symbols set up around me. Um, Probably mostly for the looks, if I'm honest. If I'm if I'm brutally honest with myself, uh, it's because I don't like the way it looks with a bunch of symbols for me. Uh, but um, I, I'm just trying to get to the point of saying that I don't I don't like having purpose built symbols. It's like there's a uh, I think it's Alton Brown, the guy who's a, the TV guy. He has like that show Good Eats that was on TV for a long time. He talks about how he hates like purpose built single use machines in the kitchen. Like he hates like the idea of like a, um, a, a, uh, a pasta maker and then a purpose built uh, ice cream maker, a purpose built fryer, things like that. Because he's like, you can probably find one piece of gear that'll do a lot of different things and you can have less things sitting around your kitchen. I feel the same way about symbols most of the time. I don't like having a bunch of super dif distinctive symbols that don't serve most songs. Um, honestly, I'm on, a, I'm on a budget still and I don't just buy like everything uh, that comes around. Uh, you know, I don't like having a splash symbol up on my kit because, the, because there'll be one song at one point, you know, in an in a hour and a half long concert, there'll be one song where it gets hit once. Um, I just find another way to do that. But that's just my personal preference. Uh, but I, I, I have no qualms, to actually answer the question, I have no qualms about crashing on a ride symbol. Even that big, uh, the thick uh, K, the K Custom medium ride that I have. Uh, I have no problem crashing on that. The big thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times when I'm crashing on ride symbols, I'm, I'm in situations where the symbols are being mic'd. Most of the time they're being recorded or I'm in a big enough venue where the stage volume coming to the audience is not as much of an issue. So I'm able to, you know, not really think about, okay, if I, if I really want to wash out this, 
this uh, this big thick ride symbol, how is it going to, um, you know, is it going to just sound like insanity to everyone else? Um, I don't have to think about that too much. But I will say that in a recording situation too, uh, when you when you crash on a ride symbol, and this is something again, I always talk about mixing with your ears or mixing through the the, the microphones. Um, and this 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 also definitely goes with choosing what to play. Um, uh, I've early on when I was when I first got some studio experience, I started learning how my cymbals sounded drastically different just in the context of a mix, even before they'd been you know compressed or EQ'd or anything. Just the way the cymbals when they go through mics and they actually get blended in with all the other instruments, how different they sound than what they sound to me sitting right here at the drum kit. And one of the first things I noticed was, Man, this this ride cymbal, when I wash it out and really go for it on this ride cymbal, whatever one it was, it actually sounds a lot more musical and a lot more pleasant coming through the mics than it does to me right here in, in person. Um, and if I never discovered that, I never would be comfortable washing out the ride cymbal um, the way that I did. So I always would encourage you just to listen to your cymbals, just like anything else on your drum kit, through the mics that you're using and the way that it's being presented to an audience, whether that's through a PA um, live or whether it's on a recording or whether it's uh, none of those, it's just in a restaurant and you're playing you know, uh, jazz music or background music or you're in a wedding band or whatever it is, do your best to perceive all of your instruments uh, the same way that your audience is going to. That'll help you play um, much, much more uh, in tune with what, with, with, a, with a, I guess I should say much more tastefully, um, much more in tune with what your audience is hearing. And um, I think that you'll be happy, your band leader will be happy, or whoever hired you will be happy, um, and your audience will be happy, which is the ultimate goal. Uh, so I hope you had fun today just talking about symbols. Uh, I know I did. It's, it's good just to take a break every once in a while and just uh, hang out and talk shop. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow for another episode of Drummer Daily. But until then, go play the drums. Have fun. That's what I'm going to do. As soon as I stop this recording, I'm playing the drums. And I hope you do too. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.